What's going on guys, Justin Nelson. I create all content on the Happy Fox Productions YouTube channel. And guess what today is? It is not Christmas, it's Friday. And what do we do on Fridays around here? We like to relax and also build computers. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. Today I have my first professional editing computer build. This is my first time ever building a computer. Um, and I'm extremely nervous because generally first time builders can be working on like a $200, $300 rig but this is about $4,000. So I'm very nervous because as a first time builder, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to mess up the sockets. I don't want to touch the motherboard on accident. I don't want to apply too much thermal paste or whatever. So first off, I just want to say this isn't going to be a video primarily about me building the computer. I'm not going to be showing you how I built the computer because I'm gonna be more focused on building it instead of setting up the camera and whatnot. So without further ado, let's go on ahead and start breaking down some of these components and why I chose them. So to start things off, we have these studio monitors. I actually have two of these. I only have one box out right now. I got the JBL 305s. And um, simple reason I chose these, and that is because compared to a couple of the other uh, studio monitors in this price range, we had like the KRK Rockets those sound kind of muddy, to be honest, in my opinion. And um, I need something that has just a really flat signal, something that doesn't overdo the bass or overdo the high frequencies. I just want something that's completely flat and within my price range and within all the reviews that I read, these were the best bet. The tweeter size is like five inches or um, I believe, I don't need some giant like, um, you know, I don't need a whole lot of sound power. So I just need something basic and these really work. They're flat, you can also, up the bass or up the higher frequencies. I'm just gonna keep it all flat. And to, um, to go with that, I also got the Scarlett 2i4, and that's from Focusrite. And simple reason I got this is because it provides 48 volt phantom power, which is awesome because I have a Rode into G3, which requires 48 volt phantom power. And also because I need to you know, have a way to connect, whoa, my connect. Yeah, actually it's not in the box, it's already set up, so we're good. I needed a way to connect my studio monitors to my computer and I also wanted an external sound, uh, sound card. So that works. So I have my studio monitors going into the back into a balanced TRS jack. And that's already set up in my room right now, but they're gonna be going in there. Um, I have, what is it? I think I have the, the monitors connected to a three pin SLR, XLR cable, sorry. Um, going into a TRS adapter and then going into the focus right. So that is my setup for that. So far it's sounding really good. The bass sounds good. I just have to set up my room for acoustics because it is my bedroom and I do have carpet which does help. I do need to set up some padding and some foam to kind of help bring down the reverb and some of the delay in my bedroom. So that is it for my audio solution. I got the JBL LSR 305s and the Scarlett 2i4s. What should we go over next? I guess we'll start slightly small first. Just to get this out of the way, this is a Microsoft ergonomic keyboard. I was kind of hesitant on this, but a lot of people said they liked it. Um, it kind of bends right here, which they said ergonomically it's gonna help your wrists. And I'm on the computer all the time, not even just editing, but typing, doing um, a lot of commenting, messaging, emails, a whole bunch of stuff like that. So I'm really hoping this keyboard um, works out. If not, then I'll be returning. For the fans, this is a uh, normal NZXT fan 140 millimeter. And, well, yeah, this is the 140 millimeter. Uh, nothing much. It was a really good uh, fan for the price and I just got extra fans just in case for cooling. Deciding if I'm gonna do a push-pull, how, however I'm gonna organize the fans. Not sure yet, this is my first time. I'm not a computer genius, so I don't even know what I'm saying half the time. So, keep that in mind. Another fan, 120 millimeter fan. Let's see, what should we go over next? The chassis, so, uh, or the case. So this is the NZXT H630. And I went this one because I saw Dave Dugdale's build, his beast computer, and I really liked it. This almost makes you think that it opens out like a door, but it doesn't, which kind of throws you off a little bit. But overall, it's good. It has a filter at the bottom to help prevent dust buildup. Let's see, we have two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, a SD docking, uh, reset your audio, your microphone, yeah, your microphone, your speakers, etc. power button. Um, it's a full-size ATX case, so that's good. Helps with the airflow. 
and it's white too, so I thought it'd be pretty cool. So that is that for the case, that's why I got it. I have a mid-size case in my room, but full size seems like it would work best for me. Moving on from that, we have the GDX 980 Ti, and I got this for a few reasons. One, six gigabytes of VRAM. Two, when I do my color grading work in DaVinci Resolve, for the video people who are watching this out there in video enthusiasts, you guys know about DaVinci Resolve. That completely utilizes your GPU and your graphics card. It barely utilizes your CPU. So I wanted something that would be able to handle that when I'm dealing with red footage or Ari footage or black magic footage. I feel like this will work. I would have liked a Titan, but one, that's out of my price range. Two, it's out of my price range. So um, the CUDA cores in this should definitely help. Um, unfortunately, I do have the uh, light version of DaVinci Resolve, which can only utilize one graphics card. If I did pay the $1,000 or if I did use the $1,000 version, I could do a two-way or three-way SLI and it would take advantage of all the graphics cards, I believe. But for now, the 980 Ti will work. This retails for about 700 depending on where you get it. And this is also the MSI brand one. So let's see, what should we talk about now? Um, very simple. Uh-oh, that's not good. We got the Arctic Silver for thermal paste. I'm gonna be applying this to my processor, obviously. Um, let's go on ahead and talk about the processor. So this is where I went a little high end. This is the 5960X 8K 8 core. 16 threaded processor has 20 megabytes of cache. I believe it it is three gigahertz and turbos at 3.3 or 3.5 one of those two I'm gonna be overclocking it to four gigahertz and Very simple reason why I got it. I do a lot of rendering. I Do a lot of rendering. I do a lot of simulations. I do just a whole lot of CPU extensive work 3d rendering um, Rendering out of DaVinci Resolve. I'm sorry not DaVinci Resolve Premiere Pro Sony Vegas and I need something that has a lot of cores, not only a lot of cores, fast cores. And I could have gone with the Xeon, but I just, I just didn't. <laughs> I mean, that would have been smart of me to future-proof my computer because I could have got a motherboard that had two CPU sockets and added another Xeon and have like 20 cores down the line. But the LGA 2011 V3 socket with the ASUS X99 Pro motherboard, I feel like this would have just worked out for me years and years and years down the line when I do need to make a new computer, build a new computer, I will figure out what's best for me then. But with the kind of work and workflow I do now, the 5960X worked best for me. I was thinking about the 5820, yeah, the 5820 with the uh, six cores, but I realized years down the line, those two extra cores and hyper-threading will definitely be beneficial for me. So that is why I went with this bad boy. It retails for about a grand to $1,200, but it is definitely worth it, or at least I hope so. Looking at the benchmarks, it is. I haven't used it yet. I hope it's worth it. And we also got some zip ties for cable management. You know, very high-end stuff. Let's go ahead and top, talk really quick about the operating system. I went on ahead and got Windows 10, Windows 10 Pro, so I can utilize all my RAM. Um, OEM edition, original engineering manufacturer. It's basically saying like the builder's version. So if you're building your computer, you want the OEM version. Um, not much to say. I haven't used Windows 10. So I hope it works. <laughs> and this is the NZXT card reader. Basically any video enthusiast, video professional, video anybody, everybody kind of does video nowadays. You kind of need one of these. This does have an SD card reader built into the computer, but this does offer, um, you know, CF card, you read CF cards, USB 2.0, 3.0, um, micro SDs. The thing that this is slightly deceptive is it has USB 3.0, if I believe, again, I might be wrong on this, 3.0 headers, but it's not 3.0, it's USB 2.0, which I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not exactly sure. That's just what a lot of the reviews are saying, but I went on, and get, went on ahead and got it anyway. It's about 40 bucks, and I know it'll be beneficial for me, so I'll go on ahead and mount that into my front drives, my front end drives, the five quarter inch drives. Speaking of those, I also went on ahead and got a optical drive. This is a, I believe it was the ASUS. I don't remember the exact model number. I'll have all that stuff in the description. This is a Blu-ray, read, write, DVD, read, write, CD, read, write. Um, really good reviews. I do need something for Blu-ray for client work. If they want Blu-ray, I can render them Blu-ray, export them Blu-ray. And same thing with DVDs, and it has really fast read and write speeds, so very simple. I just went on ahead and got this one, which is funny. 
because I almost forgot to get an optical drive and I could have used the one in the computer I had now, but why not get a new one and more up-to-date one? So what should we go about now? Um, also got a four terabyte Western digital black hard drive, internal hard drive, um, 7,200 RPM, which for 4K and 2K and all that kind of stuff, it is not fast enough. I was thinking of doing a RAID array, not RAID 0, because that's just kind of too sketchy for me. I don't want to lose all my data. I was thinking of doing a RAID 5 or a RAID 10, although I do not want to do use the motherboard for that. I'd probably want to get an external um, RAID uh, driver, whatever those are called, I don't even know. Just one of those external RAID devices where it can actually, actually RAID and then have it go and be a Thunderbolt to my computer instead of using straight off the motherboard because if you RAID straight off the motherboard, you are using your CPU, which again, you're using your CPU to process to actually work the RAID array when you could actually just be using it straight externally from your computer going in via Thunderbolt, so you're saving processing power. So that is why, so right now I just have one four terabyte drive. I'll be using this to store music, sound effects, photos, assets, um, anything like that that doesn't need blazing fast speeds. Next up to talk, um, oh, I should talk about the RAM. I got 32 gigs of G-Skill RAM. And um, let's see, I believe this was 2,800. It was decently fast for 32 gigs and also within my price range. This uh, motherboard can support up to eight sticks of RAM, but I went on ahead and got four sticks of 32 gig, and I could probably upgrade to four more sticks or just get a 64 bit, not 64 bit, 64 gig setup down the line. Just don't drop it like I'm doing it. But 32 gigs will work good for me for now, especially coming, coming off from a computer that had uh, 12 gigs, 11.7 working gigs. So that would work great for me. For my storage array, I have, just to really quickly go over, I have four SSDs. I have one Samsung 850 Pro. This is uh, 512 gigs. I'll be storing my immediate media on there. So client work, anything that's under 500 gigs that I can fit on there, that'll be my working drive temporarily until I do figure out my RAID situation. So I'll be working off the SSD, which will be fast, blazing fast speeds off the SSD. It's also the Pro version. And let's see, this is the 250 gig version. So this one I'll be putting my OS and my programs on there. Simple, everyone kind of does that. So that is the normal, um, the normal version. This is the 120 gig. So this is gonna be my render drive. So the way I have it set up is, I'm gonna have my working drive, the pro version, the 500 gig one. I'm gonna have my operating system drive and my programs drive. And then I'm gonna have a render drive so basically it's not gonna be one drive reading and writing at the same time because I don't want to render to the drive that I'm uh, reading from. So what I want to do is just kind of keep it circling. So essentially we're just gonna be doing one drive is gonna be uh, reading the footage and then one drive is gonna be writing the footage if that makes sense. So it'll, in my opinion, I feel like you'd get faster speeds. I might be wrong, I don't know. And also got another 256 gig to store my cache, temp, all the gross files that you don't need to know about, but your software needs to know about, your uh, .pec files, all that kind of stuff in Premiere Pro. So very simple. Cache, temp, render, rendering all of, and also 120 gigs isn't that much, but for right now, the way I render everything's kind of H.264, uh, basic compression. My files are no bigger than a gigabyte. Now, this is my own personal project and they'll be bigger, but um, 120 gig serves me well. Operating system and programs, and my working drive, and then my four terabyte hard drive, which will be my main kind of drive. And then I also have another drive that I'll be taking out of my other computer to put in this one, but that is an older drive. It's a 5,400 RPM drive, so I'm not trying to get any bottlenecking with that, so I might have to transfer. I don't know what I'm gonna do with that yet. But that is my hard drive array system structure right now. What should we talk about now? Um, really quick, I'll just brief over this. I got the Kraken X91 for liquid cooling. Very simple. I want to overclock it. It's very good reviews. It also goes with the NZXD case. Um, liquid cooling I've never worked with. In fact, I've never worked with any of this stuff before, so it'll be interesting how I figure this out. Um, yeah, it also comes with two fans and the radiator, so that works great. Next up is the power supply and a lot of people seem to overlook the power supply and I'm not one to talk because I'm still learning about modular, fully modular power supplies and all that kind of stuff. But um, from what I know, 
And what would be common sense is your computers ran off of electricity. And if that electricity goes pow pow and it goes away, that's bad because that can ruin your hardware, it can fry your CPU, your thousand dollar CPU, all that kind of stuff. So you don't want to just get a cheap power supply. You do not want to do that. And you also don't want to get one that's too close to how much wattage is your computer is going to be taking up. This computer, I did the math, is going to take up a little bit more than 500 watts. Or actually, it's going to take up basically 500 watts. And this is a thousand watt power supply gold. So um, besides the fact that down the line, I'm, you know, my peripherals, all that kind of stuff, if I add another GPU, whatever I'm going to be doing, adding more RAM, adding more drives or whatever I'm going to do, it's going to add up the wattages, but mainly it's overclocking is what's going to bring up the voltage and the wattages. And you want to play it safe. Even if this only goes up to 700 watts, you want to have that headroom of 100 to 200 watts to, uh, you know, don't overdo your power supply. And you d typically don't want to go off of, um, Turns out my, my audio, my mic stopped recording while I was talking about the power supply. So I don't know where I left off, so I had to bust out my Zoom H for end to finish this. So I can't remember where I left off, but basically just to sum it up in a nutshell, you do not want to cheap out on your power supply. You, if your computer's gonna be 500 watts, which is how much mine is, do not get the cheapest power supply you can, like some Corsair, some, no offense against Corsair, but don't get like a 500 watt power supply for a 500 watt machine. Always have extra headroom, have 650 or 700 watts for a 500 watt machine. Machine. Me personally, I got the 1000 watt one because I know down the line I'm gonna be adding more optical drives or more SATA drive or just more hard drives. Um, that are gonna take up a little bit more wattage. I'm gonna be overclocking, like I mentioned earlier. I have a lot of components already. What if I had one to add another graphics card? I need to have that extra headroom in my power supply. And your power supply, as much as your motherboard is the heart of your computer, this is essentially the blood. If you don't have um, a good power supply, it could burn out, it could completely ruin your entire machine. Like, for example, I have a $1,000 processor and a $700 GPU. If that all went down the drain just because I wanted to get a little $60 uh, PSU, that would be really stupid of me because if I'm going to invest really a lot of money on my main components, you have to invest a lot in your power supply, which I felt from the reviews, this um, EVGA one was a good one to go with. It's fully modular, um, fits uh, full-size ATX cases, and I just feel like this one works best for me again like I said I'm a noob but it just it seems like common sense do not cheap out on your power supply do not do that and um, I don't remember exactly what I said prior to the camera shutting off but something along these lines don't do that get a good one and last but not least we have the motherboard we have the Asus or Asus I don't know how to say it x99 pro with USB 3.1 which is awesome so the reason I went with this one is because I was originally getting the X99 Deluxe, but I saw a lot of reviews, specifically on Newegg and a lot of other reviewers. A lot of their boards were DOA, dead on arrival. So one, I didn't want to have to go through the process of filling out an RMA and then sending it back and then doing all this stuff. And it'll take like a month to a month and a half to actually, till I actually get this computer built. And I actually have clients waiting on me right now to edit certain projects that I need to edit on this machine. So it's kind of, I need to get this done now. So, um, so I went with this one because one, the reviews said it's really good. A lot of people said it's really good and it does what they need it. And all the features on it fit exactly what I need. The X99 Deluxe had a couple of extra features that I could have taken advantage of, but I felt for the price, this was, I believe, $60 less. And because of that, I was able to get my mouse pad and the, the thermal paste and all that kind of little accessories that I needed, peripherals. But um, it has all the things I need. It's the has the LG8. The LGA 2011 V3 socket, obviously, to fit with my uh, 5960X processor. It's the X99 chipset, which should be awesome. It has extra pins in it, I believe, from their previous chipset. So maybe faster processing speeds. Again, I'm not sure. I'm not really a genius on this stuff, so it's hard to say. Um, it just has all the bells and whistles that I need. What else? It has the 2.0, USB 3.0. It has all the SATA ports that I would need. Eight slots for RAM, although I only have four sticks of RAM at the moment, I could upgrade to 64 gigs down the line if I need to, which I probably will maybe. And it just looks like an overall good motherboard. It's almost the deluxe, but not the deluxe. So um, that is the reason why I went with this one. And when I did the research, it made sense. Now that I'm in front of a camera, it's kind of hard to explain why. 
again, I'm not a computer genius. If I was Linus Sebastian from Linus Tech Tips, I'm sure I could just ramble on with a bunch of technical knowledge that I have no idea what he's saying. But um, yeah, so that is the reason why I went with this one. And that is about it. Like I said earlier, this isn't going to be a video of me shot by shot building it because I'm going to be focused more on concentrating and building it as opposed to operating the camera and trying to get shots of it and everything. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the next shot when it's built. Hopefully I did it correctly. And um, this is going to be really fun. So here we go. Let's see if it works. Look at that. We're in a new room. It's been a week since I recorded that last clip and the computer is built and it is running fast and it is awesome. And it is just miles away from my other computer. So I'm super excited, everything went smooth. I did have a couple of hiccups that I just finished. It turns out I was an idiot and I didn't ground myself before I started building the computer. Luckily all my hardware is good, but I found out I'm supposed to do that after I built it, so. Second, I realized that when you're installing Windows, you're supposed to only have one hard drive in your computer, the hard drive that you're installing Windows on, and then install your additional SATA drives. It turns out I had all my drives in there. I had like six drives in my computer. I installed Windows and it booted fine. Actually, the boot speed on this was about six seconds. It boots really quickly. And when I wanted to partition my drive, specifically my four terabyte uh, Western Digital drive, there was a, another partition on there that was like system reserve or something like that, which Windows used to boot the computer also. So some of the boot information was on my other drive, so I couldn't partition it, which means I couldn't create an NTFS, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I had to uninstall Windows, take out all the drives besides the one that I wanted Windows on, reinstall it on that drive, reinstall all my programs, reinstall all my drives, just so I can get rid of that partition. And then I partitioned it to like GPT, whatever, to get the full four terabyte partition in there. Now it is all working good, but it was a giant hassle all because I didn't know that you're only supposed to have one hard drive in the computer, install Windows, and then install the rest. But aside from that, Everything is good, everything is blazing fast. Right now my computer idles at about 34 to 38 degrees Celsius for the CPU, which is awesome. The liquid cooling is really working. Uh, the motherboard is idling at a really low temperature. Everything is just looking really good. My airflow, I have six, I have six fans on the computer, two from the radiators from the liquid cooling and have two in the front one on the bottom and one on the back. I have a push-pull configuration. So basically I'm pushing air up away from the motherboard, which is what the CPU fan is doing. And then also out the back of the computer, obviously get all that hot air out of the computer. And then I have cool air coming from the front of the computer where my drive bay is going through, pushing all the way through and air coming up from the bottom. So it's kind of just doing like a full in from the bottom in from the front out from the top, out from the back, if that makes any sense, because heat rises. So I might have done that wrong, but I feel like that would make sense to keep it cool. And so far from what my BIOS and everything is telling me that it is keeping my computer cool. So I am pretty happy about that. Also, benchmarking. I ran a benchmark for Cinebench. And so far, I'm really happy. It has blazing speeds. I haven't overclocked this or anything yet. The CPU is running at three gigahertz. The, the GPU isn't overclocked. Any, everything is stationary. The RAM is how, how I got it. So looking at from what I benchmarked, my, op, my GPU for OpenGL using Cinebench got 170 frames per second. My CPU got 1,532 CB. I don't really know what CB means. And for single core, I got 146 CB. And considering when I looked on the top 15 benchmarked computers on the Cinebench website. My computer performed fairly well considering none of it's been overclocked or anything. I'm still, I feel like if I did overclock it to four gigahertz or 4.5 gigahertz, I'd see a tremendous difference. But until I get to doing that, cause I want to spend a couple weeks researching how to do that properly so I don't mess anything up. That's pretty decent speeds. Also considering I have all my SSDs in there, it is working really good. In terms of video, Premiere Pro, Blazing fast. I'm able to edit my Blackmagic cinema camera footage completely graded. I have Lumetri looks on there, a whole bunch of stuff, warp stabilizer, everything. Full ProRes HQ footage, 1080p, just full resolution, just breezes through that. I actually rendered a client video the other day of an event I shot. It was a three minute highlight reel. And my old computer would have probably taken about 15 minutes to render that in full HD 1080p in H.264. 
This computer rendered it in double real time. It took a minute and 45 seconds to render a three minute video in full HD. That wasn't real time, it cut it down in half. And it was, I didn't do VBR two pass, I did a constant bit rate, so I'm sure if it was two pass, it would have been real time because it would have had to render the video twice. But it is blazing, blazing fast. The eight cores and the hyper threading is just amazing. It is just making a giant difference. The GPU is awesome. I've ran DaVinci Resolve on it and it is super, super, super fast. I'm just kind of ranting to the camera right now. My only issue right now is that I messed up putting the optical drive in with my SATA cable. So now I, I had like the right end I don't know what it's called. Like the it's the SATA cable, but it's the right right angle one going in. So now there's like not enough clearance with my SATA drive. So I need it's like kind of tucked into my computer. It's not poking out the case. So I need to fix that. But aside from that, this thing is just a monster. It is a beast. It is super super fast, and I am really happy to get started on editing some projects on it. Thank you guys so much for watching this computer build. I know it wasn't that informative. I probably said some stuff that wasn't even true. Again, this is my first time building a computer, jumping into the whole computer knowledge area. So forgive me if I sound dumb at times, but this was a big learning experience. I'm super happy I built my own computer. At first, I was just thinking of picking out the parts and then sending it to a company to build it or whatever, but I'm super happy. I just kind of did it myself. I learned so much and it was an awesome experience and I definitely wanna do it again. So building computers is awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos, computer videos, filmmaking videos, short films, or just keep up with what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, feel free to subscribe. And I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you guys next time.